depending on who you listen to, doctors started doing more good than harm around about the late 1800s. Prior to that, statistically, if you got sick, you were better off staying home. The problem was they just kept throwing the same old remedies and occasionally, and even worse, no one at our medical problems. The same ones that didn't work in 1825, shocker, still didn't work in 1875. But there was no ability to recognize that what was being done was not working, would continue to not work, and would never work. I know what you're thinking. Not relevant to today's public school problems? Stick around, I'll explain. Eventually, they learned through trial and error because, and this is important, the, the doctors whose patients recovered got more patients and the doctors whose patients didn't recover got fewer patients. If only we were capable of this kind of learning where learning counts the most, our public schools. Since this dysfunctional system was established in the mid-1800s, with good intentions, of course, we've been applying more and more leeches and then leeches on top of the leeches with worse and worse results. Now, in my opinion, teachers are not bad people the administrators or, or, or anyone who works in these systems. Quite the contrary, they're responding to incentives or lack thereof, just like any of us would. Think about it. Are you going to put in your absolute best effort if there's no incentive to do so? Love of the job, for those of us lucky enough to have it, will only get you so far eventually. Having no incentive to improve and no consequences for poor performance will pull you down admire you in mediocrity or worse. As sure as my name is Michael Move, if you had put me in that situation at the start of my career, I'd be in exactly the same place as many of the teachers we now know and love. A few years ago, our local board of education hired the most expensive superintendent of schools in the state. The main reason this gentleman was hired was to get tax increases past the electorate any way he could. Now, in a normal organization, his job would be to get better results, which would result in more customers, which result in more money. The decision process is completely upside down, just like the results. Well, it worked. Our superintendent, aided by the school board and the teachers union, pushed through a large tax increase, barely, and our school district immediately handed most of it over to the teachers union. Without regard for performance, of course. Now, despite assertions to the contrary, teacher workload keeps declining. One of the results, my, my kids now get less than 30 minutes per week of homework. 30 minutes per week, it's unbelievable. Some apparently intelligent people argue with a straight face no less that doing less work will result in better results. What do you even say to something like that? And then came COVID. <laughs> The examples of public school failure are, are too numerous to even scratch the surface. But in our little town, the prior school administration did a survey early on, which found 80% of parents wanted their kids to stay in school. Shortly thereafter, with a new administration now in power, the parent surveys stopped. Instead, a survey of teachers union members showed that 80% of teachers wanted schools to be closed. Shocker. Shortly thereafter, the schools closed and remained closed for the better part of an entire year, while teachers enjoyed full benefits and pay, and in many cases, were sitting on the beach. We couldn't take it anymore and moved our kids to a non-union charter school, which is a much better fit, but even so, we're having to give our kids an entirely separate education in addition to the one we're paying for through the school district. You know, I wonder what would happen if when people bought an iPhone, and they weren't satisfied with it, they had to buy an Android too, but still keep paying for the iPhone. How well would that model work? How much accountability and incentive to improve would Apple have? Oh, well, I can hear it now. How dare you compare our children's, capital letters, children's education with an iPhone? I dare because the market dynamics are precisely the same. The school system is an organization, just like any other, except this organization uses poor results as an argument for increasing consumption of its product, or at least increasing funding. There's virtually no connection between pay and performance. It's an organization which makes it just about impossible to reward overachieving employees or discipline 
underachievers. Now, now knowing all this, how could one possibly expect to get good results? E even more amazing, how could one think that more of the same is going to result in better results? You remember what they say about the definition of insanity. Now, knowing that the education of our children is very important, we should be using the best systems available to us to educate them, not the worst. The average public school teacher makes about 50% more than the average private school teacher and gets substantially worse scholastic results. Now, it's reasonable to recognize the public school teachers get the more difficult students. That's more certainly a factor in the worst results. But what accounts for the lower satisfaction levels among their customers? Parents. What accounts for the vastly more generous pay? What accounts for the lavish pension system, the lower standards of performance? And yet we hear constantly <clears throat> that public school teachers are not fairly compensated, which is absolutely true. They are grossly overpaid. The value of the services you provide are by definition determined by what people are willing, that, that's the key word, willing to voluntarily pay for them. It's not voluntary when 51% of the people some of them paying no taxes at all, can force the other 49% to fund someone else's livelihood in perpetuity. This is not the dynamic that determines whether one is overpaid or underpaid. To be clear, I can easily envision a scenario where based on results, incentives, and performance, teachers would be appropriately compensated at much higher pay levels than they are now. What I'm saying is that for the job these teachers are doing, they are grossly overpaid. We need to start moving away from this dysfunctional public education system immediately. Milton Friedman suggested the interim step of giving vouchers to every parent in the country that would allow them much more choice in how to educate their children and impose much more accountability upon the people doing the education. Now, we need similar approaches to all market distortions currently being imposed on us. You know, we, we don't need more leeches. We need, well, no leeches at all would be, would be great, but let's start with fewer leeches and see where that takes us.